I'm saying? And welcome to round two. This is the podcast where we give ourselves permission to go multiple, intense, worthy rounds into our sexual reclamation, recovery, and renaissance. Again, I'm Joy Donaldson, your resident certified clinical sexologist, sex historian, pleasure seeker, solo sex enthusiast, and most importantly, survivor. I am here to tell you that pleasure is a birthright. Y'all know that I was raised heavily churched. And so I know the story of Jacob and Esau and how fighting for a birthright (laughs) basically split a people and who was deemed worthy of that birthright and how and what people would do to gain access to that birthright. One of the books that really energized me during my reclamation as well as when I was working towards my certification is Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good by Adrian Marie Brown. I didn't really have an understanding of how Pleasure in and of itself is a fundamental right. Just like we have the right to our own bodies, even here in 2023, as they fucked up everything with Roe versus Wade, we still own and have the right to our bodies and what our bodies choose to do and not to do. But I had never thought about it as a political act. I've never thought about it as a radical starting point of how pleasure is a birthright. We deserve to feel good and that in our feeling good we can begin to unpack and unravel and shake up shit that's been stuck for millennia because somebody decided to put a hold on that which is already ours lord i can preach on that right now i don't know where that just came from but here we are so again what does it look like to reclaim your pleasure i think (laughs) figuring out what your pleasure is is the first most foundational step what is pleasurable to you so when you hear the word pleasure what do you first think of guilty pleasures something sexual something whatever one nothing that i take on or dig into or have fun with is guilty let's start there write that down nothing that i have a good time with is guilty if i am consenting to this thing and any and everyone or everything that's involved in it is on the same wavelength and path and places me there is no guilty in this Somebody deciding to put guilty and pleasure together was a dickhead. And it has caused so much harm because so many people view any sort of pleasure as a guilty indulgence. Well, I have to feel bad about it. No, I'm not feeling bad about feeling good. That's antithetical to what I'm even trying to accomplish here. So no, I'm not gonna feel bad about feeling good just because you told me I'm supposed to. Absolutely not. But even in that, What's a guilty pleasure? A lot of people say, oh, I'm eating ice cream or eating cake, getting an extra side of fries, going on a drive when I know I need to go home because my kids are bouncing off the walls, watching this particular TV show or listening to this podcast or taking part in this particular content or brand or trip or whichever It's not solely a physical, sexual state of being. Pleasure is a thing that makes you happy. It's a thing that makes you feel good. And that can be as small as I'm using my favorite pen to write this thing that matters to me right now in my favorite notebook. That is a form of pleasure on top of I'm using my favorite toy right now because I'm really 
digging on myself and I look the fuck good and I want to feel the same way I look. That is a form of pleasure. Me reading the book that people told me was going to take forever to finish and it's not that important, it's not that serious and I finished it and I felt the fuck good about it is a form of pleasure. You enjoying the things you hear, you speak, you see, you learn, you explore, you inspired by are forms of pleasure and it is a political active right for you to be able to experience those things. So as we dig deeper into that, what are the societal factors that prevent us from being able to explore the things that we want to explore? So if you're looked at as being, you know, quote unquote, a double minority in some ways, if you happen to have a vulva or some variation of that, it could because intersex people exist, you don't have a foundational right to pleasure. If you are someone who is darker than the paper bag you don't have a fundamental right to pleasure you have to work towards it and somebody probably a old white dude will determine whether or not you can experience the good things in life as a millennial who has destroyed every possible industry i could possibly destroy by existing and not being born into luxury I'm constantly being told that I can't experience getting my nails done, getting a new phone, avocado toast, having peace in something in the midst of all the fucking chaos that has happened specifically over the last seven to eight years. I can't indulge in any of that because some dude decided that my wanting to experience and just have peace and enjoy a thing is invalid because I should be working. I should be climbing a corporate ladder that they're going to knock on from under me anyway. Ask me how I know the job that I worked for four years. I should be working towards that. I should be working towards a retirement I will probably never see because of how this world is set up. I should be working towards a pension that doesn't exist anymore. I should be working and doing what I need to do in a company that refuses to have a union so I can have some semblance of a life. I should be working towards an unattainable goal that keeps somehow being pushed back in order to be able to deserve pleasure. I call bullshit I call bullshit as a black as hell woman in the space that I am in right now as a mother of a non-binary child who is continuously figuring out where they belong in this space and just recently discovered that they can blaze their own path I am carving out space for them to know what pleasure means And for them to not be ashamed of it because it is their birthright. I'm a little hot on this episode, if you can't tell. And I want to really bring home the societal factors that attempt to hinder those of us who just want to carve out what small, medium, large, gargantuan, minuscule aspects of a life. That's also pleasure involved and pleasure induced. Everything should not be hard won. Again, growing up in Christianity, this belief that faith without works is dead. And they would much rather see you die in the midst of you working towards these works and get your glory on the other side then live a pleasurable life where you stand right now. So many of us have missed out on beautiful moments in life because somebody told us it's not that serious or we doing too much or we care too much or we're making things more than they actually are instead of just allowing us to have the room and the space to explore these things the way that we want to. 
and that it, it doesn't have to have a definitive answer. It doesn't have to have a definitive stop. This thing can keep going because it makes me happy. And society and people that are uncomfortable with that or people who attempted to do those things and they had some other way with bitch tell them that they couldn't do it. So I'm not going to allow you to do this thing. And it's this really fucked up cycle that way too many people are eager to get on to stop other people from enjoying their lives because it makes me uncomfortable. Because why can you do it and I can't? You're doing it wrong. All this other bullshit because you want to enjoy the life and the pleasure that is your birthright. So how do we prioritize pleasure? One, and I'm going to just be real deal with this right now. Stop giving a fuck about what other people think about the things that you care about. You prioritize your pleasure by taking other people's opinions off of the pedestal, knocking that shit down. And then going after the things that you care about. Not putting those things on pedestals because that's how shit gets fucked up. But keeping those things around you. Staying close to those things. Honoring those things. Actively working and interacting with those things on a regular basis. You can't do that shit from when it's on a pedestal. So stop giving a fuck about what these people think. And what they deem is worth your time. And really tune in to what you care about. My friends know me to be somebody who will derp. I am a derper. I will go off and do my own thing by myself. I am I am an only child raising an only child. I will go off and do my thing by myself and have a fucking blast. Because I'm not at the whims of someone else who's like, well, I don't want to be doing this anymore. Why do we have to keep doing this? Why would, that is the quickest way to get on my nerves. <laughs> That is the quickest way to cause me to feel inviting you was a horrible idea. And I don't want you to be a part of my activities <laughs> like that is because I care so much about the things that matter to me. And I used to feel so beholden to how people felt about what I cared about that I denied myself the things that made me happy. I denied myself going to a museum and just allowing myself to wander and stay in a place and take photos when you have somebody that doesn't care about that while knowing that you do and but they want to take you away from it because it's not something they care about I put that shit to a stop eventually because then I started to lose the love and the care for the things that I genuinely adore because one person is trying to make my experience about them and when I discovered that That's when I stopped (laughs) allowing people to determine how I'm going to experience a thing. Now, I do also have friends who monitor and support and care and know, oh, Joy over there doing her thing. She don't even bother her. She's fine. Like (laughs) She's she's over there where she needs to be. She's she good. Like, don't even stress about it. She's fine. Like (laughs) she will let us know when she's not fine until then leave her alone. And I'm grateful to have people in my life that understand that after having so many people in my life that actively got in the way of that, that actively pulled me away from the things that mattered and gave me pleasure. And looking at that from a sexual space and an intimacy space, a sensuality space, I had to figure out what gives me pleasure by digging past the hangups that I was told I should not dig into. I should not give energy to. Why are you telling me that I can't experience this? This is deeper than, oh, the oven's hot. Don't touch the oven. This is something good is smelling in the oven. And no, I don't necessarily need to touch the eye of the oven. But if you give me the oven mitt and I can just open the door and be like, oh, shit, there's cookies in there. I want the cookies. Are they not ready yet? Cool. I'm going to wait until they're ready. Thank you for telling me what's in there because I don't know why you kept that a secret. But I can smell it. I can hear it. Like all these, like you trying to block me from something that I can actually experience like I, I see it happening over there and you're telling me that 
well, you don't want to do that because it's hot. Yeah, bitch, it's going to be hot because you're making cookies. Like, that's, this is a weird-ass tangent, but <laughs> it's coming from someone trying to deny you pleasure because they're worried about you getting hurt, worried about you getting burned in more insidious ways. I don't want you to have my version of pleasure because this is mine over here. I don't want you to experience this, so I'm going to tell you that it's bad because it's mine. And this is a good... Yo, I'm a derper. I like to have my moments. I like to experience my moments. But I'm not going to deny someone having an experience of their own because this is something that I love. So in that same vein, how I'm how I've been able to kind of <laughs> usurp those things and take my pleasure back is not allowing someone to tell me what I can and cannot experience solely because their experience has been opposite of mine. Or they had an experience and they want to quote unquote save me from it or whichever. When they just like, bro, let's have a conversation first versus, you know, you just telling me I can't do a thing. And, you know, that goes back to uh, fundamentalist Christianity. You can't experience pleasure because your body is not yours. So any experience, sexual or not, you just here temporarily anyway. So don't hold on to it too tightly because it's not going to matter at the end of the day. It's not going to matter when you're in front of god telling you that you ain't a, you're an ancient individual and pulling the lever and sending you to hell like it's not going to matter but so many of us have been taught that we have to aspire towards a thing that's not here yet so we cannot experience the pleasures of this world because the pleasures of this world are inherently sinful so we don't get to experience that and if you're not churched if you are non-religious or atheistic or whichever agnostic have a completely different belief system or whichever in a lot of these belief systems we are taught that we can't express or experience pleasure without there being a cautionary tale attached to it when you just want to explore the thing you just <laughs> why does there have to be doom and gloom with this thing why can't i just explore this because it looks fun I'm going to potentially have a good time and <laughs> I'm going to explore or learn something about myself that was that I didn't know about until I was able to discover this thing. And denying someone that is such a nefarious thing to do and it's it's a sad way of thinking. I don't want you to experience this thing because it may or may not hurt you. I'm not going to have a conversation with you about those things. I'm just letting you know that this thing may or may not hurt you so therefore I'm protecting you from it still I'm not going to tell you what I'm protecting you from I'm just going to invoke some sort of fear in you so you don't pursue this after and what's so funny but also so frustrating is if and when you do decide to touch that stove to open the oven and see what's been in there the whole time you might see something you actually like this whole time and then you're upset that somebody denied it from you So that's what digging towards and finding what pleasure for you can look like and how we can begin to deconstruct and redefine what pleasure is for us. Start writing out the things that you find pleasurable. It doesn't have to be in order. It doesn't have to be in succinct line graphs. Like it doesn't have to be that. Just start writing it down. What makes you happy? I love walking around my neighborhood at dusk because that feels like the time where I'm the most closest to myself. I love a good chai tea. I know it's chai tea is reductive, but <laughs> I love that on a crisp fall morning. That makes me especially happy. I love at the end of a hard day, I am able to give myself release. Write those things down and begin to prioritize your pleasure because it directly impacts your overall well being. When you get to enjoy a thing, you're, you're happy ecstatic you feel connected you feel close to whatever and whoever you got to experience this thing with it gives you a high it gives you something otherworldly to experience and we all deserve that 
So taking back your birthright, you don't allow them the space to determine what you can and cannot experience because that's not what you, it's not what they want. They're centering themselves in your story and your experience and your pleasure. And it's not about them. If you're a mother and your child, every single time you try to get a moment to yourself in the bathroom, in the bathtub, just to melt away the day and they have to bang on the door, demand your attention. You have every right as a human, not even just a mother, as a human to demand your time. Say it in a way that the kid understands. If you have a partner in the house, explain to the partner, listen, I need this. I need little so-and-so to stop interrupting me. So I need you to take them out the house or distract them or whichever. But I need this time. And it's non-negotiable. The same way you have your time or we can create and craft time for you. I need it as well. It's unfair for neither one of us to not have that. And then we take it out on the kid. It's, it's not fair. So prioritizing, making your self-care, making your pleasure non-negotiable is key. Let's take it a step further. Making your pleasure when it comes to sex, solo and partnered, non-negotiable. There is no... Well, I got mine. You need to get yours. This is not a 90s deaf comedy jam special. We don't we not doing that no more. People who don't prioritize whoever they are having sex with their pleasure as well can burn at stake. That is such an archaic backwards patriarchal way of looking at pleasure and it's again denying someone someone's pleasure so you can get yours no your pleasure is not negotiable it's not well I mean I understand and you know they were having a hard day and they just need me to that's a completely different conversation of like hey I had a hard day and I just need to be worshipped in the moment I just need to go take a shower and bro I give you 10 minutes and when you walk into this bedroom I need you to immediately start eating me out like that's that's making a request and if that person is like got it and they they enjoy you receiving pleasure from them and you saying yeah hey this is what I need right now this is what I want that's a completely different conversation Somebody deriving their pleasure solely from what you do for them and them refusing to reciprocate. (laughs) No. Deny them everything. Deny them rights. Deny them all of it. Again, burn at stake. So it's vastly different than making a request and being like, yo, this is what I need. I need this. I have a mighty need. Versus somebody that's just taking advantage of the fact that you have denied yourself. So they just come in and be like, well, bitch, since you're denying yourself, I'm going to deny you too. And so (laughs) it's a non-negotiable. We not having sex with people who don't eat us out. We don't have, we not having sex with people who don't listen to us when we say, hey, I don't like insertion here or I don't like insertion at all. I need this type, this particular type of pleasure. I need this. We are no longer giving sexual anything to people who do not affirm who we are, who don't, who don't love what they have the honor to be looking upon and are admired by it, are looking at these things. The moment we drop clothes, trowel, whatever, and their mouth don't start watering, we are not having any sort of anything with individuals that are like that unfortunately due to the manosphere and a lot of right white wing commentary again the orgasm gap is becoming wider and wider because these dudes 
are determining that women are not here for sexual pleasure are here for any sort of pleasure they are here to serve me and our children alone that is their entire purpose and way too many people are beginning and are now feeling like they are safe to identify themselves in those spaces we have the proud boys like (laughs) even with them like you have to swear off masturbation which i'm pretty sure like come on y'all girl okay Denying yourself pleasure to serve allegiance to something is fucked up in religion and otherwise. And so we are no longer giving ourselves over to people who can't even give themselves the things that they want without being told that they're not allowed to (laughs) and being mad at the world because you can't get your rocks off and causing people harm is some bitch made shit. And we are no longer subscribing to that newsletter and accepting that shit as something that is worthy of our time or worthy of our concern. Pleasure is our birthright. Pleasure is something that we deserve. It belongs to us. We may go through our ups and downs. We may have had to learn this lesson the hard way, but pleasure is ours. It is our birthright. It is something that we own. To go back to the story at the beginning of Jacob and Esau. Esau was the elder brother of his twin Jacob. Jacob was always going to be some sort of hindrance to Esau because when they both landed on this earth, Esau came out first and Jacob was literally holding on to his heel, to his ankle. And people were like, oh shit. And so (laughs) as they got older, they huh, they lived their lives they were doing their own thing and of course Esau was looked at more highly because he's the oldest and Jacob was just kind of this rabble rouser who was just being the younger one he also had a, a, a mother who was just could not stay out of other people's things and so as their father Isaac was getting up there in age and honestly could no longer see it was time for Isaac to bestow his birthright now granted like I said Esau had the birthright by default because he was the older son but there was another like aspect or deeper aspect of that birthright that was going to be bestowed to him in his big age and as his father was dying but because his father was losing his sight Jacob's mom Rebecca decided to just be (sighs) be like a reddit entitled narcissistic parent and dress up Jacob like Esau and being hairy and all all these things <laughs> went into Isaac's room and tricked Isaac into giving Jacob Esau's birthright the rights due to him as the elder son like I said he already had those rights by default but it, there's like a ceremonial bestowing of this birthright to the elder son because Esau was looked at it was so much favor in his father's eyes specifically it really (laughs) pissed off Jacob and especially his mother so stealing his birthright basically stole his power it stole his name it stole what he had worked so hard for it split families it's (laughs) it split nations (laughs) All because somebody couldn't handle being second or crafting their own life and determining what their birthrights were on their own versus what family told you. That divided family so badly that Esau attempted or could have killed Jacob, but Jacob fled and stayed away for 20 years. That taking of something that belongs to someone else because you want to put your desires ahead of theirs causes so much of the problems that we have currently embracing pleasure as a birthright as something that is yours redefines how you approach how you look at pleasure from multiple different angles and helps you to find pleasure more deeply and in a way that honors 
who you are versus who you were. It gives me this this oomph, this subtle power that this right here can never be taken away from me. Not by the Supreme Court, not by a white man with a vendetta, not by past partners, any future partners, not by anyone. I was born into my right for pleasure and I facilitate and explore it as often as I desire. Reclaim it, honor it, stand in toes in it. Until next time, the next round is on me.